And over the course of a couple of sets there, you can find on that last set, you're gonna be like, oh wow, like I've gained some range of motion here. It's a really satisfying one. This has direct payout to potentially being stronger and more athletic, like right off the bat. Essentially what we want to do is give people a roadmap of stretches that you can use that are so high bang for your buck, just like strength training, squat, pull, push, you know, hinge. It's the same for stretching. There's these like bigger movements that kind of everybody needs, we'll say, mm -hmm. um, and then you can use different variations of them to make them harder or easier. Uh, it's the same for strength training. Like the guy who's squatting like double body weight that's great, but then the person who's just getting into it might be doing a goblet squat, a goblet squat, or a Bulgarian split squat. But it's it's still like squat. It's still the the same basic movement pattern is there. It's just scaled. So that's what we really wanted to do with giving this routine out. Is just like be very practical. Like, hey, follow this twice a week. Mm -hmm. And because that's what most people are missing is they're just kind of doing scattered stretching here and there. But to actually get a stimulus response from your body, you have to be doing it continuously, continuously every single week. Yeah, yeah, progressively. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, I mean, it is funny because when people say they want to get more flexible, it's, it's oftentimes, you know, they see a necessity for it, but then they don't create, end up going through the same process of anything else that you would do to get better at, which is create some sort of process yeah. for yourself a program you know here it's a program um but just just a guide to follow that, that you're gonna stick to and it's unfortunate because then what you end up seeing are a lot of people who tried stretching or tried to get more flexible mm. and then didn't get the results they wanted and now they only have like negative things to say about it sticking to this proving to yourself that you can get more flexible and then from there, once you've done that for three to six months, you've gotten more flexible, then you can maybe start to, to, to explore some other stretches and things, but just right. stick to the basics and you'll always come back to these same ones as we have. So, uh, so you know what's coming is we're, gonna t we're actually just gonna break down like every stretch that we put in this routine, kind of tell you why, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a person that likes to know whys behind things. Um, but before we dive into that, I think it's, I think it's, it's, it, we need to talk about as an adult becoming more flexible, as in gaining more range of motion, is really like you need loaded stretches in some type of way. It doesn't mean you have to use weights. A lot of people think loaded means I gotta like hold weights when I'm stretching. Like you can manipulate your body weight and leverages to make stretches more loaded than others. But what we mean by loaded is it just like you need some force going into the joint angle to like make things actually intense. Now, sometimes I think there's confusion because we like to do, we have the daily practice, um, we do like follow along stretching routines, but the difference is that like the daily practice I think is a great way to kind of get inside your body, use the range of motion that you have every day to kind of lubricate your joints, make yourself feel good. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily going to be the best for like gaining more range of motion, like becoming a lot more flexible, like in your quads or, you know, in your shoulder flexion, something like that. Whereas this, this routine that we're putting out, that this is the way to actually kind of gain range of motion. Yeah, I would say the, the way I would frame it for myself to understand it is what we're putting out is something very ambitious. You're going to be intending to make forward progress on your flexibility, whereas moving a daily practice, this is all about um, feeling good in your body and maybe being able to access those ranges, ranges of motion on the daily yeah being act, being able to to um get there quicker yeah. like say you don't need to warm up quite as long yeah to be able to access your hip range of motion yeah but that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be making a ton of progress on your hip range of motion yeah so that's the difference here and both is, is great yeah if you, you need can both. combine both like 
And the great thing about a daily practice is it could just be like five to 10 minutes. Like 10 minutes is a good <laughs> way to kind of shoot for. Whereas like these sessions, 30 minutes, 45 maybe, like more intense sets and reps, treating it more like strength training. It's the most effective way to become flexible. Like I have no doubt saying that. Um, and also like to be, it's expected to be treated more like strength training in that you wouldn't do this every day. Right. That'd be way too much. You need to, rec you need to recover from these exactly. sessions. Exactly. That's the whole point. You want to go past this threshold where you need recovery. Right. And that's why you're making forward progress. Yeah, yeah. That's a great point. It's also like you have to pay attention to the other stuff that you're doing. If you're, mm. if you're like really pounding the weights like four or five days a week, it's going to be hard to do this as well. Like it's going to be really, pretty demanding on your body. Um, you could do it, but you should probably be looking at, okay, like where can I pull back some some volume from from other workouts you know maybe i'm only going to strength train three days a week because another two days i'm doing this which is also taxing on my body and that's going to give me two days of hopefully a little bit more recovery or something like that but yeah you got to be smart about it let's dive into the to the exercises i think let's do it let's do it Enough of that chat yeah so i mean uh, essentially what we did is we we created a program as like this is what I do for a living. I write programs for people uh, and you know, it's pretty explicit. It's all written out for you. You just follow along two to four days a week. Kind of, we just talked about cadence and they have two different sessions, mobility A and mobility B. Yep. Um, and then you would just follow along as you go. And we created a YouTube video that like shows you all these, um, each of these stretches and you've probably seen them already. So yeah, a1, A2 in each uh, routine is kind of more of like preparatory, like warm up a bit, but it's, it's hang and squat. Like two basic positions that are probably like the lowest hanging fruit mm -hmm. for people that just need to kind of start like chipping away at some general flexibility. Um, hanging, like we talked about loaded stretching, right? Like hanging is probably one of the best loaded stretches for your shoulders. I don't think we need to say too much about that. Squatting, the same thing, just spending time in a squat. So good for your ankles, your hips, um, your spine. Yeah, I do think um, it's quite common now to hear that like, oh, you should, you should be able to sit in a squat for X amount of time. And you know, it's, it's, it's really known as like a really high bang for your buck mobility exercise. But I do want to say that like, it's oftentimes not just sitting in a squat. It's like, you need to pay attention to where you feel stiff or tight and like go after that. Not just like chill. Like that's not how this is intended to be in mm. this program, right? Mm. And that's kind of the difference between daily practice versus what we're doing, which is stretching, mm. um, trying to make forward progress. So when you're sitting in your squat, like we're going to be working on prying the knees open to really open up the adductors. So just like really go after that specifically, not just chilling. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on where you're at. Like if, you're squ if you could barely get into a squat, then just chilling and trying to become comfortable there is probably where you need to be. But yeah, like then the other end of that, pushing yourself forward, like we talked about, this should be all about progress is how can we make this more intense? Pushing the knees out, maybe even holding a weight down there, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Something we didn't even put in the programming, but like hanging with like, once hanging becomes easy, I don't know, add 10 pounds to, you know, add a little weight vest or something like that. It's true. That's a great way to keep building up capacity or switching to one arm variation, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, essentially, whenever anything on this list becomes easy, find a way to make it more challenging. And there's always ways, like in every single one of these stretches, there's going to be a way. Yeah. So then we move into couch stretch and Jefferson curl. So every time there's like a couplet, so B1, B2. That means that you're doing a circuit of these. One, then the other, and then repeat, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So couch stretch, uh, I mean, just the best way to stretch your quads. Yep, quads and hip <laughs> flexors. And like that's um, probably one of the areas that most people need extra attention just because yeah. of how we live our lives. Yeah. You know, we sit all the all the time yeah um so 
Uh, so with the couch stretch, where people encounter a lot of issues is just in the setup itself. I think people get too ambitious too quick and try to go to like the hardest version right away. Mm. So just make sure that like you're, um, you're able to actually make the position look like what we show you it should look like. And so that just means like if you need to prop your back knee up pretty high or don't come up quite as high as you think you should maybe stay lower and focus on finding the right position, the right stretch. Yeah, one thing that we, I don't think that we showed in the video, but this, that's why you're watching this right now, is um, actually like using some assistance from your hands to push yourself up yeah. can be a really nice way to start easing yourself. Because like putting your hands down on something is gonna offload the, the stretch a little bit. And, and pushing down can also help you turn on your core mm. so then it helps you kind of pull into more of a rounded position because what fights against you here is the arching position that's like where you'll want to go and so pushing down can actually help you turn on your turn on your core which gets rid of that right and then so some markers that you can shoot for is just like getting really upright butt to heel um can you get your back close to the wall, touch your head to the wall? Like those are all kind of nice markers to shoot for. Once you're feeling like you're pretty like good in this position, putting the arms overhead, it really just is like a way to leverage more intensity into the stretch. And to even take it a little bit further, like I've spent some time holding like a dumbbell overhead, like 20 pound dumbbell or something. Um, and that, yeah, that, that, that'll intensify the stretch quite a bit. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. So B2, yeah, B2 is Jefferson curl. I think this is one of the best stretches um, just for the, the overall like backside of your body. Yeah, we, we've never really, I think a long time ago I showed Jefferson curls on strength side, but recently like we haven't really put out much. And I think sometimes for me personally, I'm like, oh, like, People may not have the setup. They, they're maybe afraid of doing the Jefferson curl because yeah. that's been kind of like dogma for a while. You shouldn't round your back. So I've shown a lot of forward fold type stuff. But just to be like really blunt and honest, like the Jefferson curl blows away a forward fold. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's just what we talked about at the beginning. At some point, you need to add intensity. And so a forward fold can only be so intense just because of the limitation of your body, like the, the leverage is involved. So adding weight is how you're gonna add intensity to this. And yeah, I mean. Um, Jefferson curl is pretty straightforward. Like there's an, it is not really like a lot of ways to regress it or progress it. It's just like, how deep are you going? How, 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 how much range of motion are you able to push yourself with? Yeah, definitely. Now I would say, I just make sure that you feel a stretch in your hamstring, okay? Because there's some people who are so stiff in their hamstrings that when they do a Jefferson curl, it, they only feel it in their back mm. and their hamstring doesn't give at all. Mm -hmm. So I've worked with people who have that. And so if, if you're feeling that, like figure out a way to get the stretch into your hamstring, period. It well, how do you feels. do that? If you're experiencing that, then you probably should figure out how to do some of that straight leg hip hinging better so that you learn how to move in the hips more, right? It's, it really is, it's a, it's a coordination thing, like figuring out how to let your pelvis tip over. Mm. Um, and so like you should probably spend some extra time there too. Yeah, I mean, as discussed in a recent uh, hamstring video, um, like both are gonna be really essential for, you know, breaking into the hamstrings, learning how to hinge and using the J curl or forward fold type movement. So yeah. Yeah, uh, what, I, what I love about the Jefferson curl is like that weight that you're holding, whether it's five pounds or 20 pounds or, you know, 40 pounds, like it's, it's gonna drag you deeper than, than you would be able to push yourself in any other thing. Yeah. And because of that, you gotta be careful with it. Like you don't wanna just like, grab a, a freaking 135 barbell and just like jump into this, right? You're gonna injure yourself. So that's why you gotta take it slow using five to 10 pounds in the beginning. Super but then cool. as you build that up, you're gonna feel, oh wow, like now when I grab this heavier kettlebell, yeah, this thing just really pulls me in here and like I get 
nice and deep. So C1, C2 is crab stretch, elevated pigeon. So C1, crab stretch, uh, I mean, this is one of the easiest ways to just stretch your shoulders into extension. So moving your shoulder behind you, this can open up the chest, the front of the shoulder, the biceps. Um, and, and what's nice about the crab stretch is like, it's, it's another one that's really scalable in just that, hey, like in the beginning, you're probably not be, gonna be getting your hips up to like a parallel position. Um, you're gonna be like more sagged in the hip, right? But that's the way that you push yourself. Can you get more into that parallel position? And then can you make it really active? Like, are you like squeezing your butt, squeezing like the back of your shoulders, right? Like really feeling like you're kind of opening up the shoulder here and pressing um, upward, which is something that like we never do in daily life, right? We're more here and we're more like rounded in our, in our shoulders and whatnot. So crab stretch, like we've showed this a lot on strength side, pretty simple. Um, what do you think about elevated pigeon hip hinge? Yeah, the, the, so we have C2 as the elevated pigeon hinge. Um, I think pigeon is one of those movements that like most people need, but then the execution of it is pretty poor. Yeah. Um, I think the the pigeon hinge, it, it gives you a nice platform to actually work on just like figuring out how you how to open up your pigeon um, in a way that feels very comfortable, although like the stretch isn't comfortable, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like I, I think what ends up happening is the setup for pigeon can be so complicated if you're trying to do it on the floor yeah. that you end up kind of like doing all this end, uh, end around like squirreliness with your hips and your spine and you end up yeah. in a really bad pigeon. Whereas here it's you know very clear. So you just put your leg up on something and then you just start leaning forward and you use your hands as much as you need to in the beginning um, but because it's loaded, you end up feeling like a lot, a lot, a lot of prying open of the hip. Yeah, well, you're actually like using your glutes and your mm -hmm. hip muscles in this like external rotation that maybe really stiffen. And that's really the way like what we're discussing, like for adults to break into sticky ranges of motion is like you have to be like using as much strength there. Mm -hmm. as you can and like trevor said like on the ground what i see most people do is just like you just tuck your knee so much that it just becomes like a different stretch mm -hmm. and that, that stretch is fine like but it's different it's it's not going to be getting like as much as your hip rotators as on the bench you're able to just see okay like my uh lower leg needs to be parallel to this bench um, and then in the video of course we show elevating the knee which most people will probably, yeah, most people will probably need to do this yeah. in the beginning. Um, at, like I, I still, did. yeah, I still use that variation uh, sometimes because it just, it's just easier to just like, oh, let me just pop into this and get some good um, stretching. So yeah, yeah, no doubt. That's, that's routine A. So that's a routine you're going to be doing half the time. And we move into mobility B. Yep. Yep. So again, we start out with hanging. Um, but then because it's so good, man. So, just just so keep good. doing it as much as you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then we move into the straight leg hip hinge, and I referred to this earlier in the Jefferson curl. And so um, there's two different ways, really, to well, there's more, but two main ways to stretch your hamstrings. You can kind of go into a more of a forward fold where you're relaxing the whole back. But then for the straight leg hip hinge, we're intentionally arching the back mm. so that you really isolate the hamstring and maybe the calf, like the back of the knee. Right. Now I bet a lot of people end up feeling that the back of the knee stretching here. Um, and a lot has to do with pelvic position, right? So like exactly. in the hinge, we're, we're really trying to get that anterior pelvic tilt. Mm -hmm. And so the front of the pelvis is dumping forward. In your forward fold, you're not so much, like sometimes it's more of a neutral pelvis. Uh, you could even get some posterior tilt there. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, that are really stiff in the hamstrings, that's what Trevor was saying earlier, you need to learn how to move forward with that anterior pelvic tilt. Yeah, and it's, and it's challenging sometimes. So you may need to practice this in front of a mirror, yeah. um, put your hand on your back. Like it's, it's not just one of those stretches that you can relax into. Like it's a very, very active stretch. Um, a, mirror, lot of a mirror works great. Mirror, yeah, yeah, yeah mirror's yeah. awesome. 
and, and we put like doing single leg as a progression. Recently, I actually, I heard some, someone told me or something that like sometimes people who are having trouble getting that, um, that, that, that straight back, that arch back hinge, actually awesome. staggering your stance one in front of the other can actually kind of help you find that a little bit more. So I don't know if I'd necessarily say like it's a more advanced version. It is going to be more intense because you're going to be stretching one leg at a time. Yeah. Um, but it could even be a variation that you could try as more of a beginner to see if it helps something along. You might feel this behind the knee. That's actually good. You want to just get through that. So a lot of people will have stiff hamstrings. Um, when they first start stretching their hamstrings, most of the sensation is in the back of the knee. But like once you work through that, then you'll be able to really start feeling a stretch in your hamstring. You got to get through it. So just embrace it. B1, B2. We have wall butterfly and then 90-90 hip internal rotation isometric. So wall butterfly, I, 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 uh, for me, like one of my limitations is kind of opening the legs, spreading. Uh, and I, I think like a combination of pigeon and wall butterfly has been the most beneficial for me in kind of opening up that range and cracking through there. Um, wall butterfly is just, it's kind of one of these ones like a squat. It's just like low hanging fruit, I think, that yeah. everyone should be doing, especially I know like a lot of males out there um, that just haven't put time into flexibility. This is going to be a challenging one for you. Use some weights and Definitely. like this is one where you can kind of push yourself in the weights, like be careful, obviously, but you could even start with something like, I don't know, 40 pound dumbbells on your knees, like, and that it might take that much to actually get your knees to like get some movement down to the ground. And then when you contract those up, like flapping the butterfly, that really contracts your, your inner thigh adductor muscles. And then that allows you to then release them more. And then over the course of like 10 reps, you're going to get you can get a lot more open than when you started. And over the course of a couple sets there, you can find on that last set, you're gonna be like, oh wow, like I've gained some range of motion here. It's a really satisfying one. It is, it is. This is, this is definitely one of those stretches where you really see the, uh, the, like the overcoming, like the necess necessity of uh, intensity and weights, yeah. as, especially as an adult. And you'll see it play out in a set where you realize like, okay, my range of motion is just truly like this like tension that I have. Yeah. And for, for a lot of men, like we have strong inner thigh muscle, not just men, everyone has strong inner thigh muscles, they hold us up. But like there's this latent level of tension there. And if we just kind of push through it, mm. like man, you'll make so much progress just in one set. And then you add two to three sets, by the end of your third set, It'll, it'll feel like you have new hips. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. And this is one that has direct carryover to your squat. Mm. So, like for a lot of um, people who deal, like who want to get really strong, getting a deeper squat can actually make you squat, make you stronger. And so, like this has direct payout to potentially being stronger and more athletic. Like right off the bat. Yeah, and at the same time, uh, this is one that you really want to give yourself time to recover from. Like mm. this is gonna be intense and like you don't wanna do these and then say, go do a heavy squat session right mm. after. Like no, you're gonna no. be really wrecking some of those muscles, honestly. You know, like walk around a little wobbly after this. Jefferson curls, same way, you know, like we're, yeah. we're using some weight there. So definitely like be careful here, work your way up into doing more intense sets, right? We say this in the video, but like this is like a three month minimum thing, mm -hmm. right? So think that first day that you do something, you wanna give yourself like a lot of um, room to make progress, right? So really just resist trying to push yourself balls to the wall like on your first session. Hold back and then when you're a month in, now you're starting to push yourself. When you're two months and you're three months and you're seeing all this awesome progress. So yeah, that's a yeah. little tangent, but. Yeah, well I mean just like really quickly, I think, I think the philosophy that really helps me when I 
do something like this. Whenever you start a program, you want to intend to gain steam throughout the program, not like burn out, not give it all at the beginning and then end up burning out. So just, you know, start, start lighter than you would think and just intend to progress over time. 90 hip internal rotation isometrics. Internal rotation, the lost range of motion. Something that we don't really do a lot of in that we don't really think about either. Um, and, but I think it's like really a really fundamental um, range of motion for your hips. Kind of like a low hanging fruit one if you're having some weirdness in your hips. I, I, I see a lot of the time people who get really stuck and stuff might not even be able to sit into a 90-90 position on the ground, well, let alone the ground, but even like with a pillow under your hips, you're going to be like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Um, and that's why I think this is, this is a really important one, um, just isolating those internal, rota those internal rotators. Yep, yep. And this can be one of those ones that really limits your squat as well. Um, right. So, so, yeah, working on this, um, it's... Uh, I'd say it's one of the most important range of motion that like, like what you said, never gets, it just never gets touched. So spending a lot of time here. I mean, honestly, um, this is one that's, you know, we're doing the isometrics in this program, but sitting in this kind of 90, 90 position, even while you're at home watching TV, whatever, yeah. it will really pay off in the long run. Yeah, and this is one where you might get some cramps in the beginning. I mean, oh, yeah, you your will. muscles are just not going to know like what's going on there. Just work through it. Just try to stay in that pocket. Just keep doing them. It, it, it will improve. When I first started doing these, it was like, wow. Like, I actually knew like I need to be doing these because this position feels terrible for me. Yeah. Um, and the isometrics are important, right? So like, put some good mind-muscle connection in there. Yeah, the cool thing about isometrics is you can really ramp up the intensity, um, and so don't don't be afraid to here. There's no there's no movement, so just you know push yourself, go for it. C one is couch stretch again. Repeat that. I mean, I, yeah, I think two, two yeah two days of getting that hip open and stretching that the quad and that hip flexor is is really important. Um, last one, butcher block. Yeah, so this is this is one I think we both got a lot out of. Well, most of us don't put our arms over our head very often, and so that's why we like hanging to start. Um, but this is de definitely a lot more focused on actually creating um, a lot of intensity into that open shoulder position. Yep. Um, so uh, first, I think the problem that I see the most common is that people just don't understand how to actually like open the shoulder, and so. The shoulder blades do something funky where they kind of like come up and back hmm. to try to get the arms overhead. Mm -hmm. So first off, just really focus on pushing your shoulders forward and opening the angle this way first. And then you'll start to really experience a really good stretch. Yeah, the stretch is kind of concentrated in the lat, in the tricep, okay. and like kind of where they converge right here. And that's where a lot of stickiness happens. And I mean, I, I credit this stretch with, actually like helping me develop my handstand because when I yeah. first started doing handstands like I couldn't like get more than this right here and then of course my lower back has to like excessively arch mm -hmm. to kind of counterbalance myself and and I just found that this stretch was like whoa I got some weird feelings in the beginning yeah. but but it gave me so much good shoulder flexion over time and um, now I can get my shoulder like pretty open yeah. uh, because of that. And I'd say, I'd say this is um, very directly related to your posture. Um, hmm. If you have a really open butcher's block, then you probably have like pretty decent posture in your thoracic spine and your, yeah. your head. Like yeah. you're probably not one of those people that sits like this with the head forward all the time. Hmm. So if you are interested at all in, in, in like improving your posture, this is probably one of the most potent ways to do it. Yeah. A lot of, lot of butcher's block. Absolutely. So... That's the, that's the routine that's, we kind of wanted to give like in the strength side video, we don't really touch on like why we're using each exercise. So this is like a deeper dive into why, um, as far as like program recommendations go, I was mentioning in the beginning, it kind of depends on what you, what else you're doing, right? Yeah. If you just want to like, really, you're like, you know what? 2023 is the year that I become super flexible 
if you want to just really put all your priority here, you can do up to four times a week. So you're doing each session twice a week. Yeah. Now that I, the caveat there is you're hopefully you're not going to be doing a, that much stuff outside of that, that much intense things outside of it. You're not doing heavy strength training another five days a week. Right. Um, if you are doing some strength training, maybe you're doing a sport, something like that, you can do this as minimal as just twice a week. So each session, mobility A and mobility B, you do once a week, you're still going to see awesome gains there. Sometimes I think, sometimes I think it's, it's better to do a bit more of that minimal work and just make sure that you're putting the, the high intensity into each session. Yeah. Um, and then your body has a lot of time to recover and and progress yeah definitely um there's there's always diminishing returns with anything and so like if you're looking for the most bang for your buck it's it's twice a week like that's the least amount of work you could put in to get ratio wise the most benefit Mm. um and and that being said like you you know if you did want to really commit to your flexibility which if you haven't done that before like i think you and i both went through a phase where we realized, oh, we're really stiff. And it was scary to move away from a lot of strength training. But in the long term, it did pay off to like take the take the foot off the gas pedal of strength mm. for a moment yeah. and like work on some flexibility and ended up probably making our not only our bodies healthier, our minds healthier, but also actually probably um, made our strength training feel better in the long run too. Mm. So yeah, if you yeah. haven't done that before, you could give it a try. One thing to keep in mind is that flexibility work oftentimes is different than strength work in that like, you know, you do push-ups and then the next time you come back, you might be able to do a couple more push-ups like right off the bat. Whereas flexibility work oftentimes needs to accumulate over time. And so that's why it's really important to stick to a program for three months. Yeah. Uh, three months, if you should definitely see some progress by three months, but by the end of one month, you may not be aware of progress. And yeah. especially because it's harder to see progress with flexibility too. Yeah. Like the difference of a couple degrees in a joint to you may, you may not even notice it at all. Yeah. Right. And it, in, in the, the strength side video, we dive into like markers of progress. Um, so go watch that. I don't want to talk too much about that and make this really long, long and drawn out. But there's objective markers like, oh, I'm able to touch my head to the wall now in this couch stretch. But there's also the subjective markers of, you know what? Like this used to feel like I was going to rip my thigh off and like now I feel comfortable here and I can breathe, right? Um, so you got to like pay attention to these things like, journaling them can be really good taking some notes um but videos videos yeah yeah take, yeah i mean take some videos of you stretching objective. like most, most like nobody's gonna find that super sexy like you your videos of stretching but it's it's really objective and you can you can see yourself progress and like trevor said three months man like it, it takes some time and but don't let that be discouraging like just just keep at it do the minimal effective dose and you're gonna see some progress over time and the the last thing i want to add is that like for me there was some ranges of motion some stretches that like trevor was saying with the push-ups i was able to see progress like session to session i was like whoa this is moving fast this is cool and then there were some other ranges of motion where uh session to session i'm like i think this might have got worse (laughs) i don't know and those took what trevor said just accumulating a lot of work a lot of work and then you just feel like you're just like plateaued forever. And then one day you're like, Oh yeah, I made, I made some progress here. Wow. Okay. Something opened up. Sometimes that can come on the back of like a deload or like, you're just like, you know what? I'm just going to take like a week off of stretching. And sometimes that's what your body needs. And then you come back to it and you're like, Oh, cool. Like I'm, I'm, I made some progress here. I'm nice and open. Yep. I've had that happen. Pretty recently, actually. So, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that the main thing is just committing to it. Committing to it. Well, I do want to say nervous system. Nervous system plays a big role. So, like, oh, yeah. 
you want to push yourself, but the more that you're like sympathetic and like, uh, like the, the, the harder it's going to be for your body to release tension. So that's why. And like, I would say temperament wise, that's often why women gain flexibility quicker is they're oftentimes able to kind of let go into that easier. And then I think more of temperamentally men like fight. You want to, mm. you want to tense up and so, and like try and really like create uh, just so much um, stress, which helps with lifting weights. Yeah. Yeah. But part of the process here is letting go. But even with lifting weights, it's like you want to, you want, you want to do your session and then you just want to leave it. You, you just want to mm-hmm. leave it. You don't want to be thinking about it. You don't want to be like ah, thinking about how your quads are tight or whatever. Put in your work and then just try to like get to your, your life and like trust let the all that go. Yeah. yeah, trust the progress. That's, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good place to end. Cool. Thanks for watching. Like the video. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah, later.